The Lord is here. Let's pray. Our Father, may your word be our rule and may your Holy Spirit be our teacher and may your greater glory be the thing that we're most concerned about. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We know the, the psalm that Julie read yet again is, is such a famous one. And as we've often said before, whenever we have a well-known piece of scripture, we feel like we know it. And uh, often what happens is we feel that we know it based on where we first heard it, whether it was Sunday school or when we were growing up. And sometimes what can happen is that for the rest of our lives, which might be you know, decades later, we don't revisit it in any other way. Do you know what I mean? And you know, sometimes we, we see something afresh. And it may be on your way to work. It may be on your way to, uh, uh, to visit your family members, etc. And you think, I never noticed that tree on that corner. It's been there, it's been there 40 years. And I've been travelling past it and I, I never knew it was there. I once knew somebody who was from the States. And uh, behind where she lives in her house, there were woods that... It took her maybe 20 years, I can't remember how many years it was, before she actually ventured to walk through them and and discover them afresh. She'd always seen them from from her window, enjoyed the view, and then she was actually walking among the trees. And sometimes with scripture, we need to rediscover the scriptures afresh. And then they speak to us afresh, where we are today in 2024, in a different way than they did Maybe 20 years ago, 10 years ago, 30 years ago. Our focus today is is the third of the four in our series. Our focus today is verse 4. That even though I walk through the darkest valley, I'm going to be focusing, I'm going to be using the New King James Version today, which is the, uh, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, The NIV says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And I think the first thing that we notice in this passage is, it's a given that we will be travelling through some dark valleys. It doesn't say if. You know, uh, that some of you might avoid the dark valley. There's this sense in which, at some point, maybe more than one point, we'll be travelling through some dark valleys. For some of us, it's maybe towards the end of life. Um, Some of us, it was right at the beginning and things got better. For some of us, it was going swimmingly until the middle of our lives. And then we had a dark and tough time there. Sometimes the dark valleys for us have been... On behalf of other people, it, it, it's, it's caused us enormous pain because we've been loving someone else and they've been going through a tough time. And so you, you can't separate how you feel. It's the burden that Maria was feeling for the young people. Sometimes we feel somebody else's pain and their, their grief. I know that um, uh, when I, I was having my most difficult years of my life, it was as if my, my mother in particular just couldn't separate herself from what I was experiencing. And I was trying to make her feel better about things, and, but she, she couldn't help it. And that's what love does. And uh, the Lord loves us. And when we're experiencing the, the dark valleys, he, he's loving us through it. You know, when we're in a, a valley, I wanted to visualise a little bit now. There's, a, there's an image up there which might help us, but it, it looks like a fine day there. The sun's out, it might be midday. But when we're in a valley, when it starts to get dark and the sun just starts to go a bit lower down on the horizon, it just gets darker more quickly when you're in a valley like this, when you're in a low dip of land. Um, if we were on a mountain top you'd be able to just turn your face and there'd be, there'd be light on the other side or this side. If, but when you're in a valley, it, the sun seems to set 
more quickly. The shadows seem to appear a bit earlier. And they seem to be overshadowing you more quickly than you might expect. And as we know, a valley is a, is a dip in an area surrounded by higher ground. Hills or mountains, as we've said. And we cannot always be on the higher ground. The scripture talks about, even though I walk through the darkest valley, as if it's part of our journey, that there'll be a time when we will be walking through a dark valley. But it says here, through the darkest valley. And that's why the New King James Version describes it as, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. In other words, it doesn't get much darker than that. Sometimes in life, just when you think things can't get any worse, they, they just seem to get worse. Does the Lord know about it in advance? The answer is, of course, he does. He knows all things. He's omnipresent, he's omniscient. That means he's always present and he's always knowing. Does he take us out of that dark valley so we don't have to walk it? The answer is no. It's part of the journey that we walk. It's part of being in the world that we're living in on earth as well. When Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he prayed to his Father. He says, I pray not that you take them out of the world. So we're in the world, but not of it. It's part of the journey that we have. I think as church sometimes and as believers, we do people a disservice when we, we seem to promote or promise something that isn't going to be the case. We've talked about this these last few weeks. The journey that we walk has got its highs and it's got its lows. And I was reminding Julie this morning, I think it was, or yesterday, we give thanks when, when things are, are, we feel that, that sense of God's goodness. Is God, is God good all the time? Of course he is. But sometimes we feel it more than others. It may have been a family gathering where we were just overjoyed to see everybody. It may have been that you just had a wonderful day out or it was your birthday, there was gifts or somebody's kindness. So we give thanks in those situations, of course. But we're reminded of the ten lepers that were healed by the Lord Jesus. They all went away healed. But only one came back to give thanks. And so when things get dark, we are reminded that God is with us as we walk through the darkest valley. And that is why that we will fear no evil. Because the next line says, for you are with me. So we have a reason not to fear any evil. Because the very next line I said, we will fear no evil because for you are with me. You could put it slightly differently in our everyday language that we speak. Because you're with me, I will fear no evil. And we've said this before where we say, look, if we fear the Lord our God, we have no need to fear anything or anyone else. So it's God's presence with us during our darkest days that leads us to say, I will fear no evil. You know, sometimes I remember uh, in the birth of our children uh, being there at the birth and sometimes it's just holding a hand and it's reassuring, isn't it? And But the reality is how useless I would be if they were really needed something doing. But nevertheless, can we imagine the presence of God in those difficult situations where you think, I just need to know that you're here, Lord. And of course he is.
when we're traveling alone, we will fear all sorts of things. That's when we're traveling alone. When we are traveling alone, we can be, we can be overpowered. We can be overcome. And we can be caught by surprise. And I would say, friends, brothers and sisters, it's foolish to try and travel alone through the valley of the shadows of death in life. You know, during your darkest day, during my darkest days, you will sometimes find even your closest friends distance themselves from you. Some people find that during their darkest days in life, that even their husband or their wife is not with them during it. Some people find that. And when Job, we know the story of Job in the scripture, when Job was going through the darkest time of his life, it couldn't get much worse, it seems. His wife said to him, why don't you curse God and die? That was his wife. Job verse, sorry, Job chapter 2 verse 9. So, God is with us. She wasn't with him, with Job. It's a, it's a lesson, who, who do we rely on, ultimately? We, we love the, our loved ones around us, but there's only one Lord that we can rely on. But the scripture here isn't just talking about any any person. The scripture is speaking about the Lord, the shepherd and overseer of our souls. And, you know, human beings may not respond to your call at 1 a.m. in the morning or 3 a.m. when you feel that need. But scripture says that God never sleeps. And in Psalm 121, verses 4 to 5, Describing the Lord, he says, he will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. There's no off-duty hours. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, you, you want to get up early and go out and you're trying to find out if something's open. Is it open at eight? Is it episode open at seven? You know... The best way perhaps to describe the Lord's availability in those situations is 24 hour, 7 days a week. That's the Lord's availability to us. Now, does God do this for everyone? And the answer is no. Who does he do it for? He does this for those who allow themselves to be led by him, for those who trust him. And are actually prepared to follow him. You cannot have a shepherd who's the overseer of your soul and then do your own thing. For me to do my own thing and take a different path and expect God to bless it and for good to come out of it. But for those who trust and follow him, God promises his company with us. You know, uh, only because you're aware of it, you know, when uh, we lost my father last year, uh, my mother was saying, Chris, if, a, a, if it's at all possible at some point, um, maybe when you go on holiday or something like that, maybe I could come with you. So she says, I'll pay my way, not a problem, she says. I'm not ask- she, all I'm asking for she said, is for your company. And how much greater is the relationship of the Lord who loves us so immensely? He says his, his love reaches from the earth to the heavens. And when he says, for you are with me, he's talking about his company. His company is with us. <coughs> Why would we want to travel without his company? Especially during our darkest days. Why would we do that? God is, as we know, all-powerful. I mentioned he's all-knowing. 
That's where the word omniscience means. And he has compassion on all that he has made. Something that we sing quite a lot here, especially through Alan. And he loves like no other. And you know, when I've spoken to people who have gone through some dark times, perhaps often of their own making sometimes, nevertheless, they, they often say something like, but I always knew that the Lord was there. It's just that I wasn't there. There was that sense in which the Lord was so available that people knew that they could always go back to the Lord. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you are with me. Verse 4. In other words, you're with me, so I need not... I have no need to fear anything. I have no need to fear anyone who wants to harm me and come against me, who doesn't have my good in mind. And following through with that, if you were not with me, I would have reason to fear evil if you were not with me. Because who can protect you and me from evil except God. Human beings have very, very short limitations. Who, who can really protect you and me from evil except God? The holy and all-powerful one. Deliver us from the evil one was the prayer that the Lord taught his disciples. And notice again in the scripture... How the Lord is with us as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. He doesn't say, I'm going to leave you to walk through this bit, this dark valley bit. I'll meet you on the other side. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go on ahead of you. Don't worry. It's all good. You go on ahead through the dark valley, through this very, very difficult time. And I will meet you on the other side. He doesn't say that. It doesn't say you'll be fine on your own through this dark period of your life and I will join you later. He's with us as we walk through. He doesn't just observe us and see how we're doing at a distance. Sometimes I, I do understand this. Sometimes Christians can feel that he's a bit removed. But the scripture says that I'll be with you as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. It's an amazing comfort to, to know that we're travelling through this dark period, through the dark valley, but there's God's company with us. His presence is with us. You know, sometimes when the children were younger, I'm sure many of you have experienced this or with grandchildren or nieces, nephews. Um, you might say to them, look, uh, I used to try and get my children to build up confidence. I said, look, there's, there's a pound. Do you want to go and buy a, a so-so and bring it back for all of us? Just to get them a bit more confident. No, Dad, I want you to come with me. Just, you know, I'll, I'll eventually they, they negotiate. I'll... I'll I'll ask them and I'll pay the money, but can you just hold my hand as we go over and walk back with me? And, you know, we have our reasons for doing that as parents, but, but the Lord here, he, he's with us as we, as we do it all. He doesn't say, I'm trying to toughen you up, uh, and so I'm going to leave you alone for these next few weeks that are, that are so difficult for you. He's actually with us every single day and night because he never sleeps or slumbers. And I want to say to you this morning, friends, brothers and sisters, I want to remind us that we will have dark valleys to travel through in this life. But he is actually with us if we follow him and let him 
guide us. And this is where the guiding comes in. Your rod and your staff, says the scripture. There's two things. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. And the shepherd uses both his rod and his staff to lead, to watch over, to care for, and to protect his sheep. They're his. And the scripture here is referring, of course, to our Lord, our chief shepherd, the overseer of our souls. And it's talking about his rod and his staff. They comfort us. How do they comfort us? And the staff of a shepherd keeps the sheep in check, going in the right direction, not wandering off. And when you feel the shepherd's staff touch you, uh, prod you, or, or push you, it's comforting. It should be comforting. Because you know his eyes are on you. You know, if you were beginning to wander off the, le- the right lane that you should be in, in the motorway, wouldn't you want someone to give you a prod? Thanks for that. Yeah? The staff of a shepherd. That touch, that prod, that push. is comforting because you know his eyes are on you. He's watching not to find fault with you. He's looking out for you. And you know that he's correcting you. And correcting your path. Why? Because he's loving you. He's loving me. And we all need that touch of the shepherd's staff. And as we walk in this life, this Christian life, we recognize it more and more. It's reassuring. It's comforting. That's why it says, they comfort me. You know, uh, sometimes uh, if I speak to someone, excuse me, I might be speaking about my upbringing, I might be speaking about my growing up years with my father, about maybe his correction with me, um, how he had sleepless nights over worrying about this or that, or my mother as well. Um, sometimes we had fallouts because he said, this is not good. And he was trying to correct and he was trying to guide Sometimes I speak to people, and it's happened more than once. I don't know about you, but I've had people go quite thoughtful during the conversation. And one or two have said, I wish my dad had done that. I really wish he'd done that. And sometimes I say, would you have welcomed it if they had? And they said, maybe not, but, but I wish, I wish he'd done that. And they might go on to say, because I took a number of wrong turns and nobody ever said anything at home. I was just left to, to take the wrong turns and take the consequences. The staff of a shepherd. Now the rod of a shepherd is to protect the sheep. How? Against attack from wild animals who want to kill and eat the sheep. Or thieves and robbers who want to steal the sheep. Either way, they've not got any good in mind for the sheep. The shepherd will use force, his rod, to defend his sheep as they walk through the darkest valleys where light is limited and where the sheep are vulnerable to attack. The rod of our shepherd, the Lord our God, and overseer of our souls, comforts us because we know that our shepherd has all power to defend us. He has all power to keep us safe. No matter how dark things look around us, no matter how quickly suddenly the sun's gone and we're groping in the dark, You know, dark can be 
Maria, when she was praying, and could be bullying for a while. You might be young, but you might be older. You might be at work. You might have someone who's bullying you at work. You might, you may be somebody who someone's taken a dislike to because of your faith, for example. But it might not be that. <coughs> but you go back to, in prayer to the Lord, and you say, "Lord, can I leave the job?" And the Lord doesn't give you leave to do that. And, and you know that in prayer. You sense the Lord's voice saying, no, stay with it. But it's, you know it's going to be tough. And the Lord's saying, I'm with you. Stay with it. It won't be forever. I've got your back. Because I'm not far off. You have my presence and my company. I'm with you. A darkest valley just may be a grief that it just takes us a while to get out of. It's just hit hard. And it's not a day or two. And people around you might be saying, come on, slap on the back, cheer up. It's happened. It's, but it doesn't feel like that for you. The Bible warns us not to sing songs to those who are grieving. The friends of Job sat in silence with him for seven days. Sometimes there isn't much you can say. But sometimes it seems a period, a dark period of grieving and sorrow. And you know you'll come out of it one day. And you pray, but the Lord never leaves you through it. You'll feel his comfort at night when you've woken up and everyone else is asleep. You'll feel his comfort when you're driving along on a journey and your mind just naturally wanders back to that thing. One of the fruits of the Holy Spirit is the, an old-fashioned word. We don't find it so much in the newer translation. Is the word long-suffering. It's been translated patience, but it's not the same. Long-suffering is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. But in the world that we're living in at the moment, somebody says, why should you, why should you suffer at all? Especially when you length of time. Now, I'm not saying we go looking for suffering. But sometimes we have a valley that we have to travel through. And there is a fruit that the Lord grows in us, through us, by the Holy Spirit. And it's the fruit of long-suffering. And we need to remember that the Lord vindicates his people. What does that mean? It means we don't have to fight back. Because he does it for us. You know, at school, um, there was one or two really tough kids... And um, if you knew one or two of these tough kids, you, you knew that you didn't have to stick up for yourself. Now, I, I didn't really apply to me, but it happened to one or two others where they would behave sometimes badly, knowing that, that somebody else would take care. Now, in our case, with the Lord, we're not talking about behaving badly, but if somebody is behaving badly and mistreating you, Whatever it is, the Lord vindicates his people. He says, revenge is mine, doesn't he? Vengeance is mine, is the old fashioned translation. I'm going to finish with two scriptures here. The Lord Jesus says in John chapter 6, verse 39, It is the will of him who sent me, his father, it's his, his will that I, Lord Jesus, shall not lose any, any of those that my Father has given me, he says. N not one should be missing when they're counted on that day. Not, not one should be missing that is being given to the Lord Jesus. And then the Lord Jesus goes on to say, but will raise them up at the last day. That the Lord Jesus will raise them up at the last day. And it's the Lord Jesus, of course, that says, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. The journey is never alone. It doesn't matter if, uh, if you're married or not married. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're widowed or not. It doesn't matter if you're 12 or 13 or 16. 
and there's no one with you, you sometimes feel alone, misunderstood. I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. That's the Lord's promise. And the last verse I'm going to finish with and then we'll pray is Zephaniah chapter 3 verse 17. And he says, the Lord your God is with you. He's mighty to save. He's the shepherd and overseer of our souls. He will take great delight in you. And he will quiet you with his love. And he will rejoice over you with singing. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the right paths for his namesake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Next week, we, we go to verse 5 and 6. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. And surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. And I will live in the house of the Lord forever. For that's the next week. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, we thank you that you're with us. We thank you, Lord, that... We don't have to pretend that there's not going to be a dark valley for us at some point, and maybe more than one. But Lord, you don't leave us to our own devices to defend ourselves. Lord, thank you for the shepherd's staff. Thank you for the shepherd's rod that both corrects us and protects us. Thank you, Lord, that you're watching. Thank you for your 24-hour seven day a week availability you never slumber you never sleep thank you father that we have your company that we have your presence as we go through even the darkest days of our lives lord and lord thank you that you develop through us resilience more courage greater trust in you and you strengthen our faith and you refine it with fire like gold even though our faith is far more precious than gold. Lord, help us to not shirk the road that you've given us, but to know that we can do it, knowing that you're with us. And Lord, thank you that we have your comfort as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.